There have been a number of really neat features and functions added in the Floriani Total Quilter software in the latest update and I just wanted to take a few minutes to run you through what those are. As you can see on the screen you can see that the Total Quilter software is loaded and I'm going to go ahead and grab a Apple Quilt block so that we can explore some of these new features. So I'm going to come up to the Apple Quilt block icon and select it and then I'm going to find a block and I'm just going to choose this basic block 12 and bring it into the software. The first thing that I want to point out, one of the changes is when you load an Apple Quilt block, if you come down to the bottom where your design colors are, you'll notice that there's a little F wherever a color is used as a fabric in the design. So you can see that these two, the first two colors here, have an F in them that represents the color of a fabric. And this is just handy when you get working on a design that you end up bringing a lot of colors in. It helps you to isolate um, what colors were actually used in the fabric. Another thing um, that has been changed in the software is if you come to the sequence view and you expand the applicable block by hitting the plus symbols you'll notice that we've now categorized the different sections of an applicable block for instance you have fills so this would represent any um, like advanced stippling or stippling stitches that you would apply to an area and also the lines that uh, represent the motif binding stitches and also there is a section for attach you'll notice that there is no button next to it and the reason for that is because I don't have an, a design attached to the applicable block and that is a new feature that I'm going to show you in a little bit but I just want to show you that we've broken it down we made it much easier to view and see what is a part of the applicable block say that I wanted to change the colors up a little bit and I'm just going to utilize uh, different colors of like a red or a pink here so let me come over to my colors and I'm going to grab this color right here I'm right clicking on it and adding it to the design palette and let's get this shade right here and let's get a darker shade as well so I've got three different colors on here they all will work together and I'm going to use these to decorate the block so let me first uh, anytime you want to decorate a block you need to come up to the Applequilt object selection tool and this is uh, the selection tool that allows you to click on any area of a block and select it so that you can modify it so first let's start with the slider color I have this box selected if I come down here to the the color that I want to apply to it if I left click on it you'll notice that it says fabric color and the reason it does that is because I've selected an area that doesn't have any stitches applied to it it's just an open area so it recognizes that that would be a fabric piece so I can select it and it's going to change that color now one of the neat things that we've done in this update is with this piece selected this one I just changed if I right mouse click I can choose to copy the fabric and I would want to do that if I'm gonna work with a design that I want to come over to another color and I can right click and I can say paste fabric so I can come in here select the area right click paste the fabric now the other thing that I can do is I can select different blocks and I can hold down control as I click on it making sure I get inside the block and I can select all of those at one time and I can come down and let's say that I want to apply this color to it and then when I select it and go to fabric color it's going to apply that color to those areas so now I can come in and I can select this motif binding stitch and if I come down here to the darker color and I left click notice that it says line paths color and the reason it says line paths color is because I've actually selected one of the lines not a shape but actually one of the motif lines so it knows um, based off of what you select 
what you can apply to it. So you know if you meant to get a fill and it comes up and it says a line path, you want to go back and, and try to reselect a different area. So I'm going to click on line paths color and you'll notice that it changed the color of all the lines all at one time with just one selection. So now let's say that we want to get in and we want to decorate this block a little bit. So let's come over to this block again, the first one we used, and let's go ahead and apply an advanced stippling stitch. So I'm down in the bottom left hand corner and I'm going to click on that advanced stippling. And let's say that I wanted to apply this stipple number six to the block area. And you can see that it comes up here. I'll click off of it, the design so you can see that it's actually in this color right here, which actually I kind of like this color. Um, I'm going to now right click on it and say copy stitches. So this became available because I actually have stitches now. I can choose to copy those stitches and I can come over to this block, right click, paste stitches paste stitches. Select it, right click, paste stitches. It's a really nice feature. I'm going to come into this line now and select, make sure this line is selected. And one of the other things you'll notice in this update is that under the type for the run we now have a section called applicable binding motifs. And what these are are motifs that have been specifically designed for applicable process. And what that basically means is when you have a motif it's going to have stitches that go on both sides of the line and it's going to help to lock the fabric in place. So these are custom built uh, for the program and let's say that I wanted to utilize this Appliquilt um, stitch right here. I'm going to select it and hit apply and you'll notice that it applies it to this object. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want by coming in here and hitting apply. So you can see that I have that that applied here, but let's say that I want this line and this line to be the same. And the easiest way to do that is to select it, right click, and say copy stitches. Just like we did with the fill. And I can come over here, select that, right click, paste stitches. So now I have that same motif for both of those. And let's say I want to do a different one for these two. I can come in and I can select both of these at the same time. I hold down, con I select one, then hold down control and select the other. And then I can come in here and I can find a different stitch that I might want to apply to that section. So let's go ahead and select this one right here and hit apply. And it'll apply both of them at the same time. So you can see that I have this block. I'm going to go ahead and Let's go ahead and make it the same color of that little blue line paths color and you'll notice that it will change that as well. So it's kind of up to you on what you would want to use color wise for your block. But you can see I pretty much um, have this block um, decorated and now I'm ready to export it. And when you go to export it, uh, we have um, added a few features as well. First I need to make sure it's, it's selected. I usually will come over to the regular selection tool or I will come over into the sequence view and click on all items. So you want everything selected here and I'm going to click on this icon right here that's called export applicable block. Now I do want to point out that there is another export option here. This is a new option that we will talk about and it's called export, export uh, faux piecing block which is a different technique that you utilize um, in creating some blocks. It's really fun, really easy. We'll talk about that as well. But for this we want to do an applicable block so we're going to click on this export applicable block and this dialog box is going to appear. Now we've made a number of changes inside of here. First thing you need to do is you do need to name it. So let's just do AQ demo block. And I'm going to keep this path the same. I usually always keep this path the same um, because it's easy to find uh, any block that I create and export if I keep it in the same section. Um, seam allowance. Uh, I have the ability to change that. I like to use a quarter of an inch so I'm going to keep it at a quarter of an inch. 
Next you have your stitch files. Um, I'm using a brother machine so I'm going to make sure that is selected and I have the save WEF version and what that is is it's going to save this working file at the same time as the PES file. So if I want to make any changes to the block I can do that later by opening up this WAF file. So that's on by default. We do have a new uh, checkbox here called as digitized and what that does is if you created the block yourself and you did it in a specific order it would just follow that order that you digitized it in. Um, if it's unchecked what's going to happen is when this design is exported it's actually going to optimize all the stitches all your motif stitches and your stippling stitches and the reason it's going to do that is it's going to find the closest path to each one so it's going to automatically pass from object to object and the point of that is is to reduce the number of trims that take place in the block and that is very helpful for those that want to do like a quilt as you go technique where you might include the batting and back fabric all at the same time and stitch through all of it at once you don't want to have trim showing up on the back side of a quilt and so this will help optimize the design so that it, that won't uh, you won't have all those excessive trims cut files this is where you will select for your cutter and let's say that I need to utilize FCM is your standard basically for like a brother cutter if you use like a silhouette or another cutter SVG files is probably the one to go with I'm going to click import files and I'm going to make sure I save a WAF version of it and uh, the reason that I save a WAF version is because if I want to make a lot of these blocks I will actually open up all of those artwork pieces and I'll put as many as I can on one page for my cutter so that I can cut as many pieces at one time so I can rearrange them put them in the order that I want um, another new feature is this image section this is really neat I can actually take uh, and save an image of this block right from this export wizard so it'll do it at 300 dpi and I'm choosing by to draw the stitches and what that means is with that it'll actually show the stitches that are used and also I click the 3D option so that it shows the thread in a realistic view and this draw seam allowance when I export it the software automatically draws in or creates the seam allowance and so by clicking this option it will actually show you that line and export that as well so you'll get a really good view of your block print options uh, this is something that's really nice we have a checkbox for manual cutting so if you don't own a cutter and you need to cut these the fabric pieces out manually there is an option for that you just click this button if you do have a cutter and I just come over here to preview we've added a number of really neat features inside this print preview first you're gonna see what the block is gonna look like and you're gonna see the seam allowance out here and down at the bottom you have a settings button if I click settings I can come in and I can choose the printer that I want to utilize and go to the properties and settings for it you also have the number of pages showing at the bottom so you can select if you only wanted to print one or two pages you can select what pages you want to print and you have this next button it's going to filter through the different pages this is one of four and this is the main design if I go to next it's going to show me the color analysis sheet so what this is is the color sequence and you always have the skeleton stitches first and that's going to draw in all the lines where you're going to place your fabrics down then it's going to stitch for color sequence to all of the stitches and since I use the same color it combined them all into one color segment and then you also have this guide stitch and that comes at the end and basically it's an outline of the block minus the seam allowance and you will utilize this to help stitch 
one block to another or to put sashing to the, the block. It's just a guideline and uh, it's very handy. If I go to next, it's going to show me the print preview for the first color of fabric that I'm going to cut. I go to next and it's going to show me the second color of fabric that I'm going to use. And there we are with, with um, all the settings for it. I can choose to print it right now and it will send it over to the printer depending on what pages I have. By default it's going to print all of them but like I said you can change that and have it print only the pages you want. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. So I want to show you what's different with for manual cutting. If I check for manual cutting and again this is for those who don't have a manual cutter. I'm going to hit preview. It's going to bring up my print preview and you're going to have the main design again that doesn't change you're always going to get an image of the block but notice down at the bottom I had four pages in the previous and this one I have seven pages and the reason for that is because you need to print these shapes out at actual size so it's going to make sure that it prints them at the size that they need to be you're going to have your color sequence just like in the previous example. Now you're going to have the shapes and what what we've done is we've made it so that it's not filled in with color so you're not going to be using a lot of ink if you go to print these off but it does show you what the color is up in the top so you know which one you're working with. So if I go to the next page this one has two in it because it was able to fit um, it two in that page one in that page. Here's another one that had to do it in one page. And then we're on to the next color. So you can see that up here. So there is the print preview option. So you can print that out onto something like a template tearaway, which is a great product for doing the um, doing this technique because you can print it and you can cut it and you can basically do what they call fussy cutting where you it's kind of see-through a little bit so you can place it over the area of the fabric that you want to be in the block so it's a really nice way of, of doing the cutting of your fabric pieces I'm gonna go ahead and hit close now and now I'm ready to export it I have everything set up the way I want and I just hit the export button and it's going to export it and since I did choose to open up the um, different artwork pieces that will be cut, they did open up in the software. And the other thing that I really like about the new version of the software is it'll automatically open up the folder where it saved the all the block pieces. And it's always, um, if you leave it as default, it's always on your C drive in the Floriani designs applicable folder um, and then there's a whatever you named it it throws everything into that folder it's that same structure every time and so now I have all the different um, files that I need to create this block go ahead and close that out and like I said before because I did choose to open up the artwork files they're all listed here and this is for the manual cutting. It did break everything up into how it could print it. So that's why I have multiple pieces here. If I would have chose the option for a cutter, there would have been just two different colors. One for the Renaissance, which is this one, and one for the powder puff color. And that's, that's how the Appliquilt works. Those are the new features of it. One of the things that I did want to show you as well um, because I didn't show it in this demo uh, to this point is you do have the option to apply fabric in the background of your block. You just simply come to your object selection tool. You're going to click in an area and I can come over to my fabric in, in the properties box. And these are my own fabrics that I have in here so I've loaded a lot of my own you do have the ability to add fabric swatches into the software and that will be shown in a different video 
but I can come in and let's say that I wanted this plum color. I can hit OK. And the nice thing is, again, I can select it, right click, copy the fabric, and I can go to my other pieces and paste them in. So it's a really nice handy feature that allows you to do that. So I hope that you enjoy the new features of AppliQuilt and watch for the next video that is going to talk about faux quilting.